All righty, all right, all right, all right. It's Monday, Monday, Monday. Hope everyone's doing well. It's Tony Dietrich-Lizzi. Ange will be here. We're going to do a soft opening. It's a, a kind of a quiet opening uh, because Angela is upstairs right now make baking something insane i don't even know what it is but it smells like so sweet and so good so i'm gonna just answer a couple questions while i wait and she said she's only gonna be a few minutes and i'm sure she's gonna tell us all about what she's been baking i hope everyone had a good weekend and um happy monday to everybody i hope everyone's safe and well um glad to see some familiar faces like eric burkert ermigard and rebecca thornberg Good to see you, and Brennan, um, Mark Hodge, yes, I recognize that name, and Angel, good to see you. Yes, I, Angel made brownies and blueberry muffins. I don't know what it is exactly she made. She was very frantic, and she's like, I'm going to be a few minutes late. So I thought, I'll come on, sit and chit-chat for a few minutes before we get started, and then, you know, then we'll do a real start with Angel. Said, you know, let's be honest, the show doesn't really start until Angel is here anyway. But today, um, I have been thinking about, um, yeah, Kate says, wondered if it was, Kate Wheeler says it's Monday, and I said, yeah, it is starting to feel totally for me like a summer vacation when I was a kid, except without the beach and, <laughs> and uh, seeing, going to Disney or anything. It's this is kind of a strange existence where days and time are kind of all mashing and blending together. Um, the weather in Massachusetts is terrific today. I'm actually going to break my, um, my wall here. Let me see if I can, I'm just going to pan up. Look at that blue sky. So beautiful out today. So very excited to get outside uh, a little later after I'm done drawing. I'm going to do a slow rotate back and try to get this not too crooked. Anyway, yes, Molly Partridge, the party doesn't start until Ange is here, which is why I'm just going to sit and chat with you guys for a few minutes until Ange gets down here. But um, uh, it's going to be, I was thinking about this, making it a wonderful Monday. Uh, I've been thinking about um, Wandla a lot, especially um, if you tuned in on Friday, um, we did a draw by request. I did a zillion crazy drawings. I got to be honest with you, I was a little tired on Friday, so I felt like I wasn't as focused. I felt like two Fridays ago, um, if you tuned in, I drew like Harry Potter and I drew Falcor from the Never Ending Story. Man, I was like going. Even when Ian McKaig himself challenged me to draw um, Padme, I was on point. But um, I felt like last Friday I was a little scatterbrained. Anyway, one of the things that, that stuck with me was the COVID-19 alien. And uh, a few fans actually drew their versions of Star Wars aliens, um, which I thought was so super cool. And, uh, and just a fun exercise in general, right? Just thinking about kind of the goofy, fun shapes that they used in those Star Wars, especially those early Star Wars films. And, uh, and that is so closely tied to Wandla. Uh, my my middle grade uh, trilogy that I thought today I could actually talk a little bit about Wandla, and um, there are a lot of aliens in Wandla. Oh my gosh! And we'll talk about those aliens in I'm just here. a minute. But first, the party has to I start. Have arrived. You got to cue the theme music, really. Oh That's, my gosh! If you're well, gonna... listen, I wasn't prepared, and I have a really good excuse. I oh, I know. Have... They're all waiting with, with oh. bated breath to hear you guys. to hear what your excuse is. They're very excited. Serious. Oh my gosh! You've already okay. Okay, let's see. Here we yes, go. they're very excited to see. Oh my see. goodness! Hey guys! <laughs> see, I told you the party doesn't start really. The party is starting in our kitchen. Okay. So obviously you guys are hanging out with us live, but I just hung out for about 45 minutes live with Christina Tassi. And for those of you who don't know who Christina Tassi is, she is of Milk Bar fame. Anything oh yeah, geez. So she makes um, crack pie is like one of her most favorite things. She makes the most insane cookies. She makes a lot of stuff from like cereal milk and cereal flavored ice yeah, cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All kinds of cool stuff. Hey guys. Um, 
And yep, yep, I'm in the house. So anyway, she just did, she's been doing Bake Club. So every day at 2 p.m., she gives you the ingredients in advance. Oh, wow. Did you then, get them all? Yeah, I got them. Okay, and yeah. you, what did you bake? Okay, so I just made two ooey gooey butter cakes. Oh, God. Which is kind of what the um, premise of her crack pie was. It's kind of just what I need more of, too, right now. <laughs> it is so insane. Tell me it's a good antidote for anxiety and... and uh... Yeah, yeah, I mean, if, you know, butter and sugar are uh, the remedy, Yes, I've got... The cure? The cure. What <laughs> ails, for what ails me? <laughs> Bay Club is on which platform? So it's Christina Tossies on her Instagram. She's doing Instagram Live every day at 2 p.m. So before you watch us at 3, you can do some baking um, with Christina Tossi. Is she still baking right now or she's done? No, she just finished up. I can't compete with that. So that's why I, I had that in the oven. You got, it is... Okay, it smells bonkers, it guys. It is... So I, sweet smelling. I, but not like disgusting sweet, like a good sweet. I'm so glad no one was in the kitchen with me because... I was licking the bowl with my face. I literally put my hand in. I was scoop I was like, no, uh, it was amazing. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I know <gasps> Sophia came down for after school and was very excited. She tasted the cake mix and she was like, are you joking me? Right no, now? I heard overheard that because I was making my afternoon cup of tea and she's like, is this the icing or the batter? <laughs> so it's called ooey gooey butter cake because, I mean, basically the inside of it is almost kind of under undercooked which i like i don't like oh, my cake yeah. to dry out so it literally it stays gooey even when it kind of cools oh my and gosh i can't it's wait super moist and gooey it's one of the reasons why i love tres leche cake actually yes because yes, that's the yes, yes, same yes. kind of properties and i'm drawing a little rovinder um we uh a i'm i feel bad for everybody listening because they're not going to get to enjoy your ooey gooey cake and i am going to eat that um, it's going to be my new job. Existed. Yeah, I know. Oh, I also posted it. I posted it on my Insta story. Nice. So if you go to mine, you can see what I'm talking about. It doesn't look all that amazing. You don't look at it and go, that's like a gorgeous cake. Okay. But the flavor is nuts. Okay, good. Yeah. And you had a busy weekend. You were, you were posting and recording and doing, uh, all kinds of stuff this weekend. I, d I started a YouTube channel. You did. That's so, awesome. Well, you know, Tony and I both have been posting some story times. Can you tell I'm all sugared up today? <laughs> yeah, I can totally. <laughs> you so, are feeling it. Well, it's an exciting. We have exciting things going on today. We can oh. talk about them. Things that cannot be named but are so unbelievably exciting. You guys, crazy great stuff is going on here at. 5 p.m. our time friends don't call at 5 p.m. no the dogs need to be completely put, put in the oh attic oh my gosh Mimi's chasing an ant that's why they're freaking out a little field ant that's good that's good yeah that's something to keep Let them entertained get it. he'll eat oh, it he'll eat it yeah he'll eat anything he <laughs> ate a dead fly the other oh, day oh no, it's the... tickling his nose um yeah, yeah so... we got a lot of fun stuff yeah we in the works it's been stuff, it's yeah. been crazy weeks but um it's about to get nuttier so mm -hmm. um well, I'm sorry with the teasing of the info, guys. I know. I know. I wish we could tell. I know. I wish we could say more. But here's we will the thing. Soon. We'll tell you if if today goes well. I have a feeling we will have news to share in the not too distant future. Months within months. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, Andrew, I'm just doing a little warm up. I was talking about um our COVID nineteen, the alien, not the uh, the virus that's and disease that's plaguing everyone. Um, and has us all uh, hanging out together, but the alien from Star Wars, and that got me thinking about um, the aliens that I had designed for the search for Wandla. Uh, if you're not familiar, um, there's quite a few aliens, this one being one of my favorites. This is Otto. He is a gigantic water bear. So in some ways, it's not really an alien, just more like a mutated terrestrial creature. I love him. I love Otto. I want my own Otto. I want a plushy Otto. He's a... And I want just a friend. A yes, giant water bear giant friend, water bear friend who speak with telepathically. Jump. That jumps in the air when he's happy. <laughs> exactly. Um, there's also one of my favorites, uh, Rovender Kit. He's holding a, nursing a hurt ankle here in this illustration with Eva. Um, there's a really good illustration of Rovender coming up. Oh, there's a sand sniper, which is a giant uh, underground monster thing and there's another shot of rovender from the book lots and lots of drawings um 
I found this. I thought people would like to see a little bit. This is kind of a fun sketchbook before we before we dig in. By uh, the way, June Gallagher got her package. Oh, fantastic. Good to hear, and June. And she said she loves it all. Go, oh, good to hear. Uh, this is a fun book. It's from 2007. It has Kenny and the Dragon and uh, has a bunch of notes and early sketches for Kenny and the Dragon. There's some of the sketches that went uh, into the book, Ange, and some that didn't. And then when you get near, it just goes on for a while. Look, there's the sketch for the cover, and this goes on. And then, boom, in 2008, you see a bunch of storyboards for one. Line. This is sometimes how I think I may, I may be writing this story, and these are like the scenes that I'm seeing in my mind as I'm writing. They can be that simple. They're not really fully formed, and there's just loads of them that I'll do. Just do, 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 just drawing them. They, and some don't even make it in the final thing. And then what happens is those little scribbles, so you can see here, like, Rovinder's nothing more than just a, like a Muppet, you know? And so I'll start developing. Um, so let's see if I can find some. Uh, Rov Here's another one of Rovinder. You can see he's getting closer. Now, there was a lot of um, sketching going on along. You're getting so much love for this. There's so many little hearts. Oh, that's up. so good. Thanks good to guys. hear. There's Rovinder trapped, a scene that happens in the book, but I never illustrated. More of Rovinder. He had goggles at one point that we never used. But uh, here you can see Eva or Eva. I say Eva, but her the correct pronunci pronunciation would be Eva. I've just always said Eva because, you know. Florida it's got that accent. Oh, I think some people would say Eva, Eva? as well. Okay. Like, it's whatever you wrote it. It can be whatever you want. This it is a little thing though I wanted to show, and I and I wish I could claim original to this. I've seen this in art of for films and and books, um, um, like Disney and Looks Pixar. Like it needs to be animated. Eric it does, Burker. Eric Burker. You true words have never been spoken. Um, these little abstract shapes were helped me create kind of a visual language for the aliens in Wanla and, ha and ways to differentiate them. Even here's, I'm thinking of the architecture uh, for the humans, rounded geometrics. Um, here's Name Mr. Kidd. Have the dogs been out in a while? The dogs have been out, have I let them out. Just making sure. There's another Rovinder. You can see these variations. Anyway, I, what I wanted to show everybody is there's so much development that goes, here's a strange Bastille that has, I don't even know what's going on there. Um, anyway, this goes on and on. And this went on as you for a better part of a year until I started to get things that made sense. Here's a few of the sketches that started to make sense. Here's a Rovinder here with the, now this is, the writing is starting to happen. So I'm thinking of his backpack with all his belongings on his back. So he's literally kind of burdened with his past, carrying it around. The steel starts to come more into focus. Here's an early version of the Halcyonis. Uh, it's a little show and tell, but it'll, it's, it, there's a point, Ange. Uh, another early Rovinder. We didn't like, we liked the design, but we felt like this really didn't capture him. I wish uh, Ian McKegg was on today, because I feel like that's something he would, he would like. Anyway, all these sketches went on and on, and I thought about maybe today, Ange, what we could try to do is design a new alien for the world of Orbona, which is where the Wandla books takes place, Ooh. just for, as an example of how I created the aliens for Wandla. So there's one rule that I use a lot, and I use it in my... The steel would sound like Jabba the Hutt, Elisa says. I think he does too. Yeah, it's very oh, like yeah, I am, yes. Do agree. Deep and kind of oily. Yeah, I'm Bastille. Yeah. Ever He's nine. Ever uh, 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 nine. Um, this is my rule, and I use this rule in Spiderwick as well. Um, I'm going to say... I, I never can spell this word right. Sil... So, wet. Of S I L H O U E T T E? I think so. Of one skin of another. It's almost one of those things I can't look at the word. I know. I had to think it, about it. Because I have to just be like, oh, it's, a, it's S I L H O U E T T E. This is a Tony D rule right here. It's a big one for me. This is how I did Spiderwick. That's the rule. Silhouette of one skin of another. What do I mean by that? So let me show you. I've got my. My trusty Dover book that I uh, have had since I was uh, in high school, Ange. I'm going to pick an animal, and I'm going to draw its silhouette. And then I'm going to skin it with another thing. It doesn't even have to be animals. None of this has to be animals. You can use plants. You can use found objects. 
You can use all sorts so of things. Just the shape. You're using the shape of one thing. Silhouette. Like and that cobra. Back that, that, cobra, cobra thing. that cobra hood is pretty cool. That's cool. So yes, if you're thinking about like hog squeal and things like that, this is this is the birthplace of all those things. Nature. Um, so you said a cobra head, Ange. I, don't know, I just saw that one. It looked pretty cool. The hood, this one where it shows the back of the hood? Yeah, that's cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. That already looks weird because right? the cobra head is tipped up. Yep. So I'm going to use that to start with. And you we'll guys see. feel free to share that you're watching with us and hanging with us, as that's, I always re gently remind people. That's how Anja uses her picker to pick a winner for our garbage. <laughs> Today's right. garbage. If who's, you share that you're hanging with us, you could win garbage. You can win my garbage. All right, good. I was able to pan out so you can see my little Cobra reference. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna just do that. I'm just gonna do this, this weird. This is a Cobra head tipped up. I'm going to draw a center line so I can kind of make it somewhat symmetrical. I'm going to draw this hood. I like how everybody's casting Wundla right now. Grace mm. Vanderwall is Eva, someone said. Grace Vanderwall would make an amazing... We said uh, that same thing. When, if there was going to be... A, a live action or animated. She, she has she a terrific voice as seen in, um, in uh, Stargirl. I like this. I'm going to I'm going to keep this shape, Ange. Yeah. And I'm going to keep this shape. Okay. I really like that. And I'm going to keep this. Okay. There's some really neat stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go somewhere else. That's it. I'm done with that. Is that, that the I'm, head? I don't know. I don't know. Now I <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Imthern, already sharing. I want some garb. I'm a huge fan of an angler fish. If I mean there's lots of uh, Dungeons and Dragons monsters, the Spiderwick goblins have a lot of angler fish in them. This is a, uh, my, my darn book's already broken. It's just so old. Look at that. Look at that guy. Look at, just that weird false eye is so cool. So what if this alien had a false eye, Ange? Maybe that's a thing. Like it's, it's an old thing from long ago. Oh, you mean like the dangly thing? How it dangles its eyes? Like... No, 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 no. It has a spot oh, on the that's side. false. So these oh, yeah, aren't yeah. its eyes. It's Perhaps it's realizer here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. I'm just thinking. Just trying. Now, a true alien life form, if you asked me what I think alien, if they do find life on some of the other planets, this is what I think scientists are going to come back with. They're going to say, here it is, we found life. I think that's what it's going to, here it is, life, there is life on Mars. I think this is what the first aliens, Earthlings, will ever see is going to look like this. This is probably what it is. It's going to be little, tiny, multi, small. Like oh, I think there's real super duper intelligent stuff, but I don't know if we'll find it. Because that just looks like COVID. Oh, it does look like COVID. <laughs> the aliens are here mm -hmm. and they're invading. And right now the battle is, is real. Um, so, I mean, so when I say all that, when you're designing an alien for a story, and it can be Star Wars, it can be um, books like Wandla uh, or Star Trek, but they're made for human consumption. So we look for eyes, nose, and a mouth. We look for those things to try to figure out in a blink of an eye, is this thing good? Is it evil? Uh, you know, do I trust it? So I'm just going to I'm just gonna doodle on this, Angela. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of, there's a lot of this kind of give and, give and take. Exploration. Yes. Creative exploration. Yes, yes. And there's almost like, I don't know, there's just that kind of actually going to push. I had so much fun watching Christina Tossi today. And for a second, I thought, gosh, if people leave watching us feeling as happy as I felt watching her, I'm like that. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Right. I did watch Lisa Loeb live the other day. Oh, how actually. was she? She was awesome. She was super chatty. She took questions from people. She Aww. played music. It was you, awesome. You know, uh, I don't know, was it a couple summers ago, you and I, we were, or uh, the three of us, we were down in Florida, mm -hmm. and I took photos of retro packaging. Do you remember that in Publix last year? It's last year. Oh, the Doritos? Yeah, and Lisa Loeb loved that, and I think she retweeted it. Really? Yeah, she wouldn't follow me. That's right. But she loved my... I wonder how that She happened. also is a fan of retro food packaging, apparently. Hmm. Who knew? Interesting. Yeah, who knew? So here, I don't know, Angela. I my worry, I don't want to get too fishy, but you know, I'm just I almost like this kind of weird 
abstractness. Those could be the eyes. Those could be the real eyes. Aw, Ella Manor, La Pointe. La Pointe? La Pointe? Said it's her favorite part of the day. Aw, yeah. ours too. We love doing this. Aw, you guys are awesome. There's some stuff happening here. I'm not feeling it. I'm not going... I'm not... I'm not uh, 100%. Oh, Craig. Craig Austin said he waited all weekend for this. Oh, and he, you're like, and now this is what you're drawing? This is it? This is... I love that, like, we used to get excited about the weekend, and now we're excited when it's Monday, because we're like, yay, we get to do Facebook Live with everybody. Built off the, the mm. thing of a cobra. I'm not sure I'm I'm feeling it yet. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get down on this face if i can not lock that face in again i think of like all the star wars aliens you know like um there's greedo that's the guy that zaps or tries to shoot han solo depending on what version of star wars you're watching greedo has kind of a an anteater kind of nose and then giant bug eyes and ears and a mohawk right i mean that's kind of what he looks like right he's like mm -hmm. bata wuta solo Right? And then, um, what's another big alien? Oh, Chewbacca. Another alien in Star Wars. So, very, I mean, Chewbacca's basically a dog. He's got the dog nose. He's got a dog mouth. He's got his eyes. Right? But again, it's very symmetrical, very based on terrestrial things that we know and we understand. So, you have to kind of think of those things here. This guy looks like an evil overlord already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Han shot first, obviously. Yeah, no, that's some things don't even need to be. I mean, really, like, why is that even a th conversation? I don't know. Come on. I don't know. Why? Why? It looks like a helmet. It's very helmety, and I'm not finding. Okay. I'm not finding what I need. But what I do like is this. I like all this. So, how, you know what I'm gonna do, Ange? Mm. New sheet of paper. Do it. Yeah, move on. This Ooh, is how it was with Rovinder. It was a lot of this, like, trying to, like, all right, maybe that's it. Maybe not. Let's keep moving. I'm going to move it to the side, and I'm going to keep drawing. That stuff smells so good upstairs. It really does. It just keep smelling it. Lie. I think what, what's interesting right now is why I'm working on this. I have no sense of of its nature. Is it good? Is it evil? Is it, you know what I mean? Jolene said this is a cool process. What inspired you to sketch it in this way? What inspired what? What what inspires you to sketch in this way? Like to go from like silhouette and then I guess what you're asking. Oh, yeah. Right? That uh, yeah, I don't, you know, Jolene, great question. I don't know. I just started thinking about, I, I just started thinking about if you could make something feel, um, uh, not comfortable, familiar. familiar. <laughs> if and yet ref, new and refreshing. If you did this, if you use the form of one thing, but well, and also come on, half the work's done. Yeah, well, and you got lots of. Re if you know kind of your, you know, Ange. If you know the recipe, then maybe you know where you can go with it and what you can do and how you can reference it. So, like for instance, when I was doing the Spiderwick goblins you know i i could get all the reference i needed of um of american toads and and um angler fish and things like that that i used angie's gone she left she she had to go check on the food see i've done i've turned it i don't know if you guys can tell i took this and i've kind of turned it sideways it's kind of kind of finding Seeing if I can find something in, in this. That's kind of nice. That's kind of a whale. A whale mouth. So your instinct is to be like, oh, it's kind of like a pterodactyl. Let me, let me give it a beak or let me, you know, let me put the eyes right here. And so what you, and that, that's perfectly fine. It feels right, right? Because again, it feels like something we've seen. So the question the challenge I always put to myself is what happens if I push that further um, away from the obvious? So maybe if I move the eyes here or I put the eyes way up here, like 
almost like a spider. I actually kind of like that. One of the things I did with with um, with the One Love books were the um, the Halcyonis. Let me show you. I think they're in this. We did these little sketchbooks. I don't know if anyone has them. We gave I gave them away when I was on tour. But Somebody for like mentioned earlier that they had some two of the sketch and three. Yeah. They wanted to know if you had um Yeah, they're gone. They're like long gone. We've sold them and gave them away. So the Halcyonis, I did a really interesting thing where they had two mouths and one was for talking or one was for uh talking and one was for eating. I thought that was kind of a cool like they it just developed speaking in a different of, way. Just try it. I'm going to oh, talk literally. Of eating. Uh, just Let's try show. I want to show. Here's Angie's. Here's her thing I just, she made. I couldn't even contain it. I just Look at had that. To flop some if you guys place. could smell this. <laughs> that's insane. That's really good. Isn't that amazing? I'm sure it's good for you, too. It only has two sticks of butter in it. <laughs> then the bite I just took? <laughs> oh, my God, you guys. I'm, go to my, go to my Instagram and I, I posted her Instagram handle and it's in her story right now under her live video. Go watch it. Make it. It's amazing. It's insane. It'd be a great, it's amazing. be ooey, a great, ooey, ooey butter cake. Be a great treat. Mm. It is a great treat. So Andrew, oh, I'm kind of, so I'm, I'm kind of. I'm just playing, Ange, with this kind of the idea of kind of <laughs> doing a side view of it. Maybe I can figure it out. I'm just kind of playing and moving just to see what, what happens when I... It's almost got like the movie Aliens. It's got that kind of big noggin on the back of its head. I also <laughs> think of... Um, Tom Hoffelder said whoever gets the trash today gets the cake, too. Yeah, we're going to put a slice of that cake in there. <laughs> Sophia, can I try this? come here. <laughs> How is it? It's so good. It's so good. Scale of 1 to 10? 100. <laughs> yeah, no you kidding. You can go get your own piece. <laughs> so the other thing that they do in Star Wars that I also did in Wandla, Ange, was you would create a really mm -hmm. bizarre thing like I'm drawing now. Mm -hmm. And then you you just throw straight up people clothes on it, right? No, seriously, Star Wars does that all the time. We when we were looking at the art, they're like, "All right, it's got it's got a a giant mosquito aardvark head, and then it's wearing a jumpsuit." You know what I mean? And I did the same thing where you know with Rovender, he's got like this wide brim hat and an old flight suit on. So like the even though he's kind of strange looking, that's another way you can make them more approachable. So like this kind of weird thing that looks strangely looks like it's wearing a bathing suit or shorts. Get rid of that. If Is um, it a cape thing? I don't know. <laughs> it's still abstract shapes it looks right like now. It's like a ship that you would have drawn, the body part. Well, we'll do that on another one. There was a whole trick I did for the ship. She Oh, it looks like a woman and it reminds me of in Lilo and Stitch. You know that like where Stitch's planet like she's like we must go get... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the other thing. What if this was not boned? It was more tentic tenticular. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all this was tenticular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's no... I'm just going to keep it moving like this. I think this is the way to do this. That, so they really get a sense of how this exploration works. That this... If it's like an octopus where this is tentacle and then this is membrane, I find that that would be really interesting to see. Here's what I need to know. Does it wear pants? Did you send the creepy SpongeBob out to Phoenix? Done. Nice. Okay. Done. The only one that is not, the only recycled garbage that has not been sent out was Molly uh, partridges, I, Molly, I still need to send, if you're listening, I still need to send you yours. Um, I need to go to the post office to do that. So what I've been doing is to minimize trips to the post office. I'm waiting until we got, we've got a, quite a few packages that need to go, which will be this week. So. Oh, Councilwoman, that is her name. Councilwoman, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So there's kind of an interesting something going on here. I don't know. I mean, what's interesting is you could have its appendages. Wait, is that her 
arm right there? Yeah, but it's there, this could be the other arm here. And then this has also got a weird... It's, like a cape, kind of thing. Oh, wait, it's very, fly? yeah, well, it's maybe almost like sea sluggy where it's got, it's got membrane between everything. I don't know, maybe overcomplicating it. Hmm, yeah. But maybe not. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you see a sea slug swimming in the ocean, it is so beautiful. So if this was, if she was like these beautiful bright colors, like how cool would that be? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's so it's a, a female. Let's see if we can actually make it look and feel female. I'm gonna make her mouth smaller. <laughs> Carolina, Sibula, I was happy you're not remembering that creepy SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah, I I was off a little bit on Friday. Mm -hmm. Not gonna lie, you was, were wasn't quite there. I was I was we distracted. Were... It was it had been a long week and um. Yeah, I just had things on my mind. Not nothing bad. Just just looked at the news too much. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's that. I feel like it's a it's a. I almost want it to be like a hat. Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah, where's Harrison Ford when you need him? Yeah. I want to just do like that, like a, a very Star Wars. This kind of old Flash Gordon type helmet. Mm, it's helmet. It's a helmet. She's like a pilot. I don't know. Anyway, um, so we started with this cobra design, and now it's kind of gaining this kind of octopus-like thing. And I, but I would love to see that. I would love to see a thing that works with tentacle-type uh body versus just a boned because maybe on its planet the gravity is such that it doesn't need to have a, a rigid bone system it's light enough that it can actually swim in the air how big is this creature yeah i'm gonna answer questions <laughs> yeah that's my oh. <laughs> yeah sure i don't know <laughs> it doesn't seem very big to me or i mean that's the thing right like here's a human Whoa, you're huge, dude. Right? Whoa. There you go. It's, it's me. So does it move like a ray or something? Sure. There's me looking at it. Huh. Or it's, you know, fits in, you know, it's the size of this. It fits in my hand. I don't know. It's <laughs> like, you know. It does look like a space singer. <laughs> oh, the thing in uh, Fifth, Fifth Element? Element? No, she was kind of like all. She reminded me of, the, yeah. I don't know. Here's so here's one. We got one done. It's not bad. Yeah. Let's try another one. Okay. I think we've pushed this about as for at least my brain. This is as far as I, I feel like I can. You know what it is? It's actually lacking the thing that you the strong silhouette. That's why I tried to change the silhouette in it yeah. a little bit to see yeah. what I could what I could get out of it. See if I turned it to a profile. Could I what come up? If you look at it from different directions. Oh yeah, I mean absolutely. It's kind oh, of look. Then it's flying. It's kind of moth-like. I'm gonna keep moving. Okay. Let's just keep moving and exploring. Um, if you're just tuning in, we're drawing aliens today, or trying. I'm attempting to draw aliens. Uh, I haven't drawn all day actually. Too, I'm a little. I'm a little uh, cold. So think of that as your warm up. That's yeah, I'm warming it up. So let me see if I can find something cool. I'm just gonna flip. Ah. Oh. Who doesn't love a capybara? Huh. I'm going to okay. start with a capybara ranch. Okay. Now, my sad book is so cracked and broken, I can lift chunks of it <laughs> and set them. Here, I'll put my capybara right here. So everyone, um, by the everyone way, everyone can see my capybara. A lot of people shared really awesome drawings last week. Yeah, of their that aliens. They were doing. I saw that. People were drawing all kinds of stuff. They were drawing witches because you drew. Yes, we drew Mother Louse early in the week. Yes. I'm just, oh my God, I almost just love everything about this thing's shape with this little stick legs. What else were people drawing? Well, we did that. We did the wizard uh, miniature for uh, Dark Sword, which I'll probably do another one of those this week. 
That'll be your day off again, Ange, if you okay. want. Thank you. I actually was at, Jim uh, asked if I wanted to do like a bull owl bear, like a big, super duper, grizzly, Kodiak bear, owl bear. So maybe we'll do that. That's always kind of fun. Um, the other... Mm, wizard lizard. That's right, Jason. Alona, you drew that. That was awesome. Yes. I did? No. No, you didn't. Jason did. Jason did, yes. Yeah, I remember seeing it because he tagged us. Yeah, there were some great tags on uh, on Instagram. <laughs> I love that, like, it kind of been in keeping with the, um, with the Chewbacca of it all, Ange. This kind of furry... Uh, George Lucas said that Chewbacca was inspired by his dog, which I thought was great. So... I'm just curious what happens if we kind of do our own version of a fur thing. Now, it's interesting that Capybara's eyes are like way here. They're they're oddly far back. So I'm wondering what happens if we move them. I mean, we could give it spider eyes, which is kind of weird. That's its mouth? That's its muzzle, yeah. So it's it like a little parrot fish mouth there. It's very kind of... I love that it just has this little kind of Muppet. Oh, cool, Joanne Lone watched Eye of the Beholder over the weekend. Ah, the yes. The Art of Dungeons and Dragons documentary. Yes. That's awesome. And said, I've heard that voice before. Who could that be? What voice? The voice of... My, <laughs> oh, your voice. My annoying voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Capybaca. <laughs> I like Capybacca. Mashups are fun. You haven't mashed him up yet. He's still just a thing, but I, I'm, I'm really intrigued by this, this ball shape and these skinny, the skinny body. So I'm gonna see if I can make that work, for me. I think I guess the truth is there's probably not a whole lot of difference between. This kind of science fiction, if you want to even call it that, Ange, and fantasy, right? I mean, I could just as easily put this guy in peasant's clothing and make him a, a an anthropomorphic or a um, armor. You know, what I mean, like you, you could you could put him in a in a Victorian jacket, and now he's in Kenny and the Dragons land. I could put him in armor, and he's some now somehow some kind of Dungeons and Dragonsy type thing. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of interesting, just that this kind of well, I mean, this if, kind if of thinking. It, he's kind of like you can see the shape of him. He kind of reminds me of TikTok from Phantom Tollbooth. Oh kind of like yeah, that dog, yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant dog body shape. I'm going to just full on. I'm he looks sort of like a general of some sort. Oh, yeah. You could, he could be a little. He'd be quite a, a tiny general. Let's make him a little general. Let's see. I don't know. A captain of a ship. Maybe he's. Pirate. Ooh, I like a pirate. I, I like that pirate. he's a pirate. Space pirate? What does a space pirate wear? Well, if he's a space pirate, he's definitely hey, do you got. Want to zoom in more? Just curious. I can. I just want to be able to see the capybara um, reference that I've got right here, handy dandy. Uh, I like space pirate Ange. I'm trying to think about a space pirate, what he would wear. I was thinking like in Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a lot of those type of um, kind of mercenary space mercenaries. Airship pirate Andy Robinson said. Oh yeah. He looks like a giant. Naked mole rat, too. Yeah, he does. Right? Those kind of... Just trying to see what happens if I try to draw almost a... Oh, what if he almost has like a beret? So I think of like a green beret where he's very got this very elite... I don't know. That's not very pirate-like. That's more military. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of interesting. There was supposed to be a band of pirates. Um, they were going to be in the third 
Wandla book, I thought about doing this band of like junk pirates and it ultimately just kind of morphed into um, one character. Um, but I had definitely thought about these kind of these kind of pirates that were kind of living off the off the land and kind of as the as the um, as Queen Oho was was gathering resources, these pirates were constantly robbing them. So I mean, I could give him. Don't uh, constrict yourself with the paper. Oh, I'm not. Yeah. Do you feel like I am a little bit? With whatever's going on in his head. Oh yeah, that's true. I'm thinking of some kind of rodent weapon here. Yeah, mustache. It's kind of what. Kind of a rodent. Oh yeah, you could. You could definitely do kind of a. Makes them almost. You can see that mustache moving when he talks. I do like that eye, that kind of surly, and there's all these scars around his face. This is all scars, 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 scars. He's even got a, like a chunk out of the bridge of his nose kind of thing. Like he really has seen a lot of, of action. Now this is really scribbly. Once I figure out what I'm doing here, I'll, I'll lay a sheet of paper over it and David May said, Orange? Mm, maybe. Maybe David May. Maybe. Maybe David May. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly a space pirate. I'm going to push that. Oh, I forgot the second part of my rule. Maybe that's what I need. So he's got the out, he's got the silhouette of a capybara, but maybe I need to skin him with something. Well, Sanj, and that'll help me find it a little more. Mm. I'm also going to swap pencils out because that one I want. Soul patch. <laughs> Nothing says timeless like a soul patch. No, it's true. That is true. Nothing says he's a Creed fan like a soul patch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of like Jamie from Mythbusters. I agree with that, actually. He does look like Jamie. It's the, uh... And slightly Wilford, Wilford Brimley-ish. I draw a lot of Wilford Brimley like things. I don't know why. He's like, I've got I've got the diabetes for meeting that ooey gooey butter cake. <laughs> I'm just gonna just swap in uh reptilian. Because why not? And see if that helps me. So this is how Rovinder was discovered. It was a lot of this kind of I mean, and you remember it was a lot of kind of just trying out different things, trying to figure out. Um, Gosh, you know, it's like a glance and I just saw him in a face mask for a second because I just came from the grocery store. Oh yeah, you went to the grocery store today. I did. How? My out I had not been in quite some time and I had to go. Like each trip I'm dropping like 300 bucks because I'm trying to go every like two weeks or something. Yeah, well yeah, and then we usually have, there's usually some kind of run in the middle of the week that I'll go do, yes. like last week. I you got know, ice cream. Ice cream and you toilet. Guys, what, ice what cream and toilet paper. Here's my dream. I want to be like the very hungry caterpillar. Like I just want to be inside the pages of my home eating through everything and then i'll emerge at the end of this like a beautiful butterfly oh my god no i'm no. just becoming a fatter caterpillar oh my god that's totally <laughs> i'm with you on that i've totally mutated i've pushed them into places i don't like Ange. Mm. oh yeah no. yeah no. it's definitely i like the nose maybe longer snout no, well, that was the thing I loved about the capybara was this kind of squared offness. That's like the only thing I like is his eye. <laughs> I'm really struggling today, Ange. I'm not really feeling. I'm not. I'm. Uh, okay, listen. I'm not feeling don't put, it. Don't don't stress yourself out. Okay. Somebody asked if you could draw Otto. I could draw Otto. But now I'm also seeing this as a challenge, and I'm trying to. See if I can pull it off. You know how I am. Like, it's not a... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I agree. Space Pride feels very Treasure Planet. Yes. Mechanical peg leg. 
I liked the some of the design work in Treasure Planet. You need more butter cake, Dean Baxendale. That's what it is. Baxendale said. This is part of the three o'clock time slot. I usually uh, hit that like three o'clock wall. So I I'm not as fresh as I am. All chocolate variety Neapolitan ice cream. Oh, I thought that was a joke. Like it was just all chocolate. There's different kinds of chocolate. The three chocolates. <gasps> oh, like, like milk chocolate, dark chocolate, chocolate chunk or something. Yeah, do tell. I'm into it. Yeah, I might grab some ice cream too. You guys, Lee Edward Fody. I know you just. Dad go steampunk, and I'm gonna say it publicly. Not I'm not a steampunk fan. No, I'm not. Never have been. Strangely, nor am I. Why do I have so much disdain for steampunk? I don't know. We both have it. I don't know what it is. I Always just think been it the... looks so dorky with the top hats and the. On paper, I should be a huge steampunk fan. <laughs> I really should. It has all my favorite things, but somehow, I mean, hey, listen, it's inventive. It's so inventive. I've seen steampunk, all kinds of things. But somehow when I see steampunk, I just can't, I can't get into it. I can't either. Every time. When I, I see just, a top hat with just random gears hot glued to it, it just, I don't look at it and go, that's cool. I just look at it and go, why are there gears glued see, to your top okay, hat? Okay, this is why we're together. Because if you really liked steampunk, I would question everything about our existence, <laughs> our existence. together. I I get I get people love it. I don't, I'm not taking that away from anyone. No, if you like it, more power to yeah. you. More power to you. I I just I can't. I will only snicker when I see you wearing your goggles. Your top your hat. your goggles <laughs> over a top and hat. Holster. I've seen steampunk Boba Fett. I've seen all these like steampunk versions of things, and I just somehow it just never quite. Maybe it's also the name steampunk. No. Nah. You know what? It, it feels really dated to me. Every time I feel it's like, like I'm, I'm not a fan Heathers, of. I'm, or not, I mean, like Mean Girls. I'm like, stop trying to make steampunk happen. It's not going to happen. Well, steampunk happened. It, it definitely happened. It's it's. <gasps> oh my gosh. We have a special delivery right now. We do? Our friend Teresa Fisher, yeah. amazing artist extraordinaire, yeah. just texted me. She's dropping masks off on our doorstep. Oh. Um, right Hold on. Oh, let me get. One sec, I'm gonna give her one of the butter cakes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not be too hasty. Come on now. Ah, oh, so generous. Sometimes it hurts, guys. She does that when she wants to make dinner. She'll sit here and make a dinner all day, and the whole house smells so good, and it'll be like a lasagna or something insanely delicious. And then, she, you know, and then she'll invite a bunch of people <laughs> over, and I have to watch <laughs> as they just eat it all. There's never seconds, there's never leftovers. I just watch it all disappear. It's, uh, you know, it's a blessing and a curse. I See, look, I am pushing through. I am not going to... Get, I write Molly Pottridge, not the butter cake. I know. Ugh. I should go cough on it. That's bad. He's got something in this hand. I don't know what it is. I'm still not even sure that, that he's got this thing going. Oh, you know what'll make him? Nothing says pirate then. Instead of a hook, like Captain Hook, let's give him like a weird robot where the arm was. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, we're gonna lob the arm. We're gonna lob, lob one of his arms off. Although I guess they did that in Treasure Planet. I think the guy had like a hydraulic leg or something. But we'll do it here. It'll be fun. So I'm gonna do. I don't even know. I'm just going to start with. I'm going to go back to that. That the. Um, the the capybara had these little skinny arms. I'm just. See how I'm just drawing like rando shapes? These will all become things. But what if he had the captain's hook here? Could be cool. He's like a captain. I'm still holding on to that captain. But he's a captain. I do think I'm gonna have to add some paper here. Hold, please. More paper. 
You guys didn't give up on me. I'm not giving up on you. I'm going to keep going and see if we can make this guy something because I feel like I'm on to something. My capybara alien. That's right. Yes, Avery, thank you. In, in Treasure Planet, yes, the guy had like a uh, like a cyborg arm that was like a Swiss army knife. And it's like, yeah, that was, uh, uh, oh shoot. I can't remember it from Treasure Island. The, the guy everybody loves. Anyway, let me keep going here with the body. Let's see if I can, I'm going to, I'm going to stick to that round. I love that whole round thing that the capybara had. Oh, I think this collar needs to go way up. I've been thinking, I love a big high, oh, I'm off the page here. Sorry, guys, here, here's like a, I'm thinking this kind of big high collar would be kind of fun. And now, just kind of playing, are they long legs like this? So that's kind of fun. You have this kind of, or is it, so here's where you almost want to just, Just almost go human. Just give them like straight up human type. Oh, I feel like he's got a weapon in this hand. Some kind of weapon. I'm still got the pirate. Just gotta figure out what these. Oh, hold on, maybe I need to. Oh God, it's like the wolf thing, guys, all over again. We've got the the weird wolf legs from uh, Harrison Ford. Oh, I think it's gonna be more. I don't know. That's kind of he'd be a fun character, and I'll tell you why, especially if you had an earth or a human, a terrestrial human, because they would look at him and go, oh, he's so cute. And then he's this horrible, uh, you know, pirate, you know, really vicious pirate with a mechanical, you know, claw, vice claw thing, like right here. I'll figure all that out here. And I also think we have to do a, a hat to kind of add to this. I'm feeling pretty good about though. I mean, I know it's scribbly, but I hope you can kind of see what I'm seeing as well. Oh man, there's like, this has got to have like some kind of thing here in the arm. Keep adding. Yeah, I'm thinking of like, uh, be kind of interesting to make these some kind of a boot, like a pirate boot. In Star Wars, they even did this. They kind of just had these kind of, you know, Han Solo was just wearing these. They wore a lot of like, just almost like World War II style boots. So maybe he just has these kind of boots on. I don't know. That seems kind of boring. I'm going to take those back out. And just for a second, I just want to see what happens if I... Just give him like, that's kind of cool. These really long legs and just little feet. Like, it's kind of interesting. And he's got the boot. I mean, that's also kind of cool. I gotta balance them. Hmm. There's something to it. I'm gonna leave that for a minute. I'm gonna add another. We're gonna do a third piece of paper because I'm crazy. And I'm gonna add for the hat. Because I feel like his hat also says a lot about him. So I'm gonna add a third sheet of paper. And then I think we should work on this guy again tomorrow. I'm gonna work on him a little bit longer, but then I think maybe tomorrow we come back I can kind of fiddle with them a little more. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'm gonna, 
I just want to see if there's any kind of cool, I mean, I'm thinking of like a really fancy, That's wizard, that's weird. This is almost like a Three Musketeers. I, I mean, some pirates wore tricorn. It would actually be kind of cool. Put him in like a tricorner hat. It's kind of what, uh, um, Johnny Depp's character wears in uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean. I think he has a tricorner hat that he wears. But it'd be cool to kind of extend it. I kind of like that. What do you guys think? This is it, though. This is the process. This is this kind of ditch digging. You know, you're just, nothing is precious. You're just constantly, be cool to watch this on, uh, if I had done a high speed, because it would have looked so effortless. And yet where you guys are sitting with me and while I'm trying to sort it out and figure it out, you can see that there's all this constant give and take, give and take. Now I could do sharp is going to add, it's going to give him edge if I make the angles of his clothing sharp. The other thing I could, ah, here we go, here we go, here we go. I love a weird collar. So we could give him a high, this is like a high kind of Captain Hook style collar. This is a collar. He's got these weird inner collars. He's got scales here from the alligator that I was looking at. So there's would be scaly. Uh, he's He's got the, whatchamacallit, but I think it's just all, um, like a capybara, but I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any fur. I think it's all just skin and, and, uh, it's really that eye. I don't want to mess that. I feel like that says so much. The eye with the scar really says a lot about who he is as a character. Um, I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to turn him sideways so you can just see the whole, look at that. Like we've got a pretty neat silhouette. I'm still not sure what to do with the legs. I think maybe what we'll do, you know what we'll do tomorrow? Um, I'm going to scan him in the computer tonight, and we're going to work on him in Photoshop tomorrow. I'm going to sketch on top of this in Photoshop and show you how I do um, revisions in Photoshop. And then we can kind of revise his design. We can we'll be able to grab pieces of him and kind of stretch him and squish him. And, um, and then we'll print that out tomorrow, and then... We'll transfer it and do a final drawing. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, um, I'm gonna put a pause button on this for today. I think we've got, and you guys in the meantime, come up with some cool names for him. I have no idea um, what his name is yet, but um, just to get a full shot, let me see if I can turn the phone if it won't go too wonky. Uh, nope, phone doesn't, it's telling me not to do that. So um, anyway. We'll scan them in, and um, we will uh, noodle on them tomorrow on in Photoshop. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Angel will be back. Um, she ran off to go. She's either eating her gooey ooey pie or she's um, talking uh, to the neighbors. But thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you tomorrow. Be safe. Be well. See you tomorrow. Bye.